everybody. Welcome to Joe Jaguar's show again. As you can see today, I put out in the backyard the Mead 6000 uh, triplet uh, refractor. Um, and we're going to try to look at Jupiter in a few minutes. Daylight out there, as you can see from there. But it's, um, you should start to see it in probably about 20, 30 minutes. So that's perfect timing to let it cool down anyway. So, Angela should be almost here. Uh, well, it seems like uh, she did call as I was uh, making this video. So we're gonna see you in a few minutes and the um, Jupiter should be rising very soon. See you guys in a bit. Okay, everybody, what's funny is I already found uh, Jupiter just by scanning the sky. And as you can see, I'm gonna show you it's not even dark at all. I can't even see it with the naked eye, but I kind of know roughly where it should be. So I just uh, point the telescope there, moved it a bit and boom, got it. Today, we're gonna be using my Nagler eyepieces. And right now I got the 17 millimeter and you can clearly see Jupiter. Um, it's a low power eyepiece. However, with the blue sky, it actually looks fairly nice. Um, I just barely see one moon. I should show Angela this so she can see. Because uh, it just it's definitely different when you see it in the daytime. You're not expecting to. Let me go get it. Okay, what do you see? Hi. Yes, but you can't even see it, wow. but I pointed to it, see? So, I mean, a small image, it's small, but... How do, you, how, how, how do you make it? How do I what? How do I find it? Yeah. Well, Joe is a pro. He's no amateur. So, you know, I know it should be right around there, so I just point the telescope, moved it around, and boom, I got it. Um, wow. Yeah, okay, well, we can't even see it, but... He's a genius. Nah. <laughs> Nah, I'm okay. Anyway, go get yourself ready. Yes. And uh, I'm gonna just talk okay. to people and you'll be back. Yes. So will I. Okay, so the first eyepiece I used was a 22 Nagler, which is a very nice eyepiece um, type of thing. And it only gave me about uh, 43 power, I believe, uh, with this guy being 910 millimeter focal length. Um, now I just put in the 13. So that brings me up to about 70, 73. I can definitely still go higher, but um, it's just nice to see it uh, actually in the daytime. Uh, I mean, what's nice is um, you guys, like in a couple other videos uh, you saw when we're observing, obviously it's dark and um, you know, then it's hard for you guys to see uh, us, what we're doing. So it's nice in the daytime um, I still don't see it with the naked eye yet, but it's it's gonna be very soon. Um, again, I don't have, uh, I got a finder scope, I got the Rye Gel finder scope on it, which is like a bullseye, which is great. Uh, no, no tracking, no motors, so um, I'm gonna put a nine millimeter Nagler on right now, it gives me up to 101 power. Yeah, definitely bigger. I don't know 100% if the scope is climatized. I don't think so, because I can see the boiling effect uh, of it. So I don't think it's 100% climatized. Okay, let me keep pushing the power. So maybe we have to wait a while um, because I can see the boiling effect on it. So which means it's not, it's not perfect yet. I should probably wait at least another half an hour uh, for it to Climatized to the outside temperature. Now I'm putting a seven millimeter Nagler in there, and that takes me up to about 130. Still about half polar alignment. I'm just guessing. Let me show you why. Okay, because as you can see, um, the townhouse type of place is facing north, which means I can't really even see Polaris. So I just put the mount where I think it is, and it actually is always pretty good. Uh, you could always use a compass as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do 
is I can still see there's a lot of, it looks like when you're looking through a, a fire place or something, you could see the plume of fire uh, around it. So I know it's not climatized yet. Um, but I have figured out how, um, if we're observe, observing in the night, of course it's gonna be almost dark or black and you're not really gonna see us mainly, it's just gonna be the silhouette. But I figured out in the editing how to turn up the contrast and boost the gain where you do see us much better, and but it's still dark. So uh, I think I gotta let it cool at least another 30 minutes or so, and then we'll try looking at Jupiter and Saturn again when it's a little dark. I actually see Jupiter right now. Uh, Saturn, uh, because it's a lot dimmer, four times dimmer, can't see Saturn yet, uh, with the naked eye of course, but uh, definitely can see Jupiter now. So anyway, I'll catch you guys in a bit once it's fully cooled down. Okay everybody, so Angelus is here again. <laughs> okay, so we were testing the Mead 6000 series 130 millimeter refractor, Apple triplet refractor. Now, I couldn't show you any videos, uh, except for the ones that I did at, you know, before it got dark, because our neighbor started playing loud music, and it would have, it would have, like, there's no point recording, because we would have, you, you guys would have heard it. So we just did our little testing. We went to Jupiter, up to 227 power, looked good, but it started breaking down the image at, two, at 227. Then we went to Saturn, and we went to 303 power. What did you think about that? It was very nice. I, I was telling him that I, in this uh, telescope, I saw like a white, the, the Saturn, and the other one, say, it looks like before, like a yellow and tiny. And this one, I could see clearly the it was pretty middle. Big, yeah. It was big, and also even the lines in the, in the planet. Okay, so what do you, what would you say, and try to be honest, compared to the eight inch though? Which, um, which one do you? I was still very new. <laughs> Do you remember what you saw on that guy? Where is it? That guy last week? Mm. Or no? It's hard to tell. You know what? Cut. Okay, so what did you think that guy, how did it look? Or what was your interpretation? Do you remember what it, how it looked Saturn last week? I think it was close. We got the same power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This time, but I think but last I, time I, was I really it was like pretty, it, really. it's pretty close, pretty close, I think. Yes, I, I really like it, the, the, the image today. You said, okay. some, you said something though. Oh yeah. I was trying to use one eye, and then I said, okay, because I cannot do, I cannot close the other one, and then I was covering this eye and see, but I noticed that when I when I close one eye, the the planet is in this size, but when I was closer, and then the planet was going oh, the no, other that's side. That's not what I'm talking about, not the <laughs> parallax. <set. laughs> and then what about? I was, okay, you said something like, okay, I think this is better, the meat is better than the Takahashi. Ah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, it's, what I think is, it's really hard to base off memory. What you see today, what you saw, like, I don't know, a month ago. Now, what you guys got to remember is, a month ago, the planets were a little less as high. Now they're a little bit higher. That could be the slight difference. But also, it's a big difference, okay, right there. So, there you can see the meat and then the Takahashi. The Takahashi is only 102 millimeters. The mead is 130. That's a big difference, you know what I mean? Yes, they're both triplets, although the glass is still better quality on the Takahashi. But it's, again, it's very hard to, you know, something that much smaller, and then you have to go off memory. You, you gotta go then side by side, and then see like, 
how we did the four and six inch. Like, okay, it's well, kept maybe, up. Maybe we can do it another thing. We do Takahashi against the meat the, 5.1 the inch. 5 inch. Maybe, but I do still got to do the testing of the two five inch Maxu tops. So I got a few things I got, I got to do, but maybe we could do before the planets go the Takahashi because. Yeah, okay, well, there's a few different few I want to do. I want to do the two Maxu tops against each other, since they're exact same size. Then I wanted to do the five inch Maxu top against the Takahashi. Oh, okay. Because the five inch compound should equal a four inch clear refractor. Should mm -hmm. be very good comparison. But um, we can also do that one too. But it's just hard to go off memory. Like what you see today, I think is better than a month ago. And then uh, we gotta also remember, last week when we used the eight inch orange one behind, yeah, uh, it was very good uh, sky condition. Yeah. So it's hard to say, like you know, uh, sometimes we it just looks clear, but there's turbulence in the atmosphere. It's hard to it's hard to do that. Yeah. Anyway, but it was still okay. I thought it was pretty good. So I think if you guys again are thinking of a you know 5.1 inch or 130 millimeter apple refractor and you can't afford because that guy that size in a takahashi would be like ninety eight hundred dollars before tax so it would be about eleven thousand dollars wow that guy is about four thousand four hundred with with tax canadian so it's still less than half right so it still gave a pretty good view but yeah, you know, sometimes size matters, like she, she was saying. She likes a full eight inch, and there we go. Eight inches, that orange behind it. Sometimes you need, the bigger it is, the more light it's gonna collect, and the bigger overall detail you see. Sometimes in the refractors, if you're accustomed, you can see the smaller detail. So it's a fine line before, maybe that's why crazy people like me has one of each. That we have, you know, a portable one, a smaller one like these ones, a solar scope, a couple of refractors, a couple of Schmitz, you know, I don't know. Yeah, great. I don't know, whatever. But anyway, that's our test. Sorry we couldn't show, but that music was way too loud. So we're just telling you what we saw. It was pretty good. If you guys are thinking of a mead, or if you're looking at that size, because the six inch size, remember, the next size up is this black guy here as we just saw the other one and that from the five to six it's big difference right yes. so if you're looking for something not as big as a six and five is your maximum and you want a, a apple chromatic that is a very good scope i would say for the money you could probably get a double it would be even cheaper but the color correction might not be as as good but what's good about this mead it already has a good focuser for visual and astrophotography. You're ready set. It's a triplet. You're ready set for photography. The only thing you need is a reducer. That's it. And that scope will do it all. So anyway, that's the mean 6,000, 130 millimeter refractor. This is Joe here. I'm Angelus. <laughs> and we will see you on our next video. Yes. Like? Uh, like us, comment, and subscribe. And if you don't, you don't. That's <laughs> it. Anyway, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>